Hello and welcome to this very different episode of Taking the Tradition On. It's the last in the series. Um, hopefully there will be some more from the autumn onwards, but my Arts Council England project is drawing to a close. I'm working on my evaluations and you have all been with me on this journey, so I think it's only right that you should help me do the evaluations too, which is what tonight is all about. Um, I opened the doors instead of having one guest, uh, I invited anybody who wanted to come and share their thoughts um, and now I'm inviting you as well but what you see will be a little bit different this week it was a meeting format rather than a webinar so you can see lots of little boxes the traditional zoom boxes have arrived at taking the tradition on and so let's get started here we go welcome to the last for now anyway taking the tradition on um, so, as you can see, it's a very different format. It is uh, a meeting tonight. I still have to say thank you very much to Getaways and Edways because I'm still using their Zoom account, even if I'm doing it in a different way. Um, and also, thank you very much to the Arts Council of England um, who have enabled this whole project to happen and have just let me have lots of time to play and learn how to do things digitally and try with try messing about with sort of different formats. So as I think you probably know by now, this all started um, with that sort of reel-to-reel -reel player and several boxes of reel-to-reel -reel tapes of Duncan. Um, but also with the time that I got to spend with him, listening to him and learning from him, which I did in my teens and early 20s mostly. Um, he died. My daughter is going to be 13 tomorrow, which is quite scary. And he died. Um, he had his stroke. We were driving up to see Duncan um, to introduce Chloe to him. And he had his stroke when we were on our way up. So he got to hold her once. Um, and then so, so there was kind of quite a, a nice balance in that. But I was also very, very cross <laughs> because I'd really been looking forward to spending that time with him and learning all of those children's stories and rhymes and things and had a cottage but for the winter I was just going to spend my maternity leave up there so in that time since he's died I've become a completely different person and it's just been a really amazing experience for me to be able to listen to those tapes and to think about the things that I learned from him as a young woman and now I'm 45 and the tapes that I'm listening to on some of those tapes I think he's about, he's in his 40s and set in the early 50s we're, we're contemporaries which is a whole different thing kind of grandfather granddaughter relationship that we've had um so i have i am gonna i'm gonna use the mute power if you start playing music at me i don't mind being heckled but the radio uh. <laughs> <laughs> so so that's sort of that's where i'm coming from and it's, it's been a great opportunity to think about jack tales and to have this space on taking the tradition where i've got to talk to all of these amazing people who've got um, such a wide <coughs> breadth of knowledge, people like the amazing Doc Rowe and Joseph Sobel and Heather Yule and Melanie Ray and Helen East. So quite a Mike Rust, so quite a lot of my um, interviewees are here tonight. So I'm really grateful to you for coming and to have this space now. So they've all gone off in their groups to chat and I've given them five questions to think about. And I'd like to give those questions to you as well. Uh, obviously you can't feed back in this meeting, but you can write to me. Uh, you can put it in the comments. Uh, you can email me at amythestoryteller.hotmail.com. Um, you can send message me on Facebook. However you want to get in touch, it'd be lovely to hear your thoughts as well. So the questions are, uh, what does the storytelling tradition mean to you? What importance do you think traditional storytelling holds in the world today? How do you think I, or we all together, should be taking the tradition on in the future? How do you feel about storytelling online? And the last question is, will you continue to go to online events take part in events like this taking the tradition on when you feel comfortable to go to live events again will you still do all this online stuff okay so those are the five questions you can pause me have a bit of a think about them if you like or we can go straight back and see how everybody else got on
<laughs> Let me put you all back on gallery view so I can see everybody. Mm. And how was that? I'm sorry about the technical glitches. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, Interesting good. chat. Very impressive. Yeah, it was. How, how, how long did you give us in the end, Amy? I just was curious. It was pretty much 20 minutes, though a bit of that was faffing about with the questions at the beginning. Um, 20 minutes sounds a long time, but when there's three or four of you in a group, it just goes so fast. I have to say, it was really strange for me because I'm used to being in control. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> I sent you all off and trust that you were going to be all right on your own. <laughs> <laughs> it's strange. And, um, and I haven't had a big group to practice doing this on before and lots of things you can practice on your own but breakout rooms you have to have people really. <laughs> you got people you got to have you kept, on, you kept on appearing like a ghost yes are you all right um but also uh yes I, I had practiced the broadcast but i hadn't realized there was a minute you, you could only, you only have a few characters so i couldn't put all the questions up on this that didn't quite work so i'll know that for another time it's but this is it i mean like we've all just been learning and learning and learning the last few months and it's definitely been learning for me so what i'm going to ask you to do and i've, I've completely plagiarized this format from um casgley which is a, a friday morning session that i go to it's run by beyond the border and i've really loved it and i've loved having that kind of chance to meet other people that's um how, how i got to meet anne um we'd, we'd seen each other's names i'd never met her before and i know heather's been coming as well that chance to actually have some sort of grown-up conversation and debate and to talk about storytelling has been has been fantastic um i'm just nicking their their format completely um but it's also a really good way for me to get a bit of feedback about what I've been doing over the last sort of few months. Um, and because I really want to hear from everybody, but it would just take a long time to do it in this size group. And it's just really hard to do it in this size group on Zoom. So I'm going to ask each group to feed back and I'm going to give you three minutes. And I've got a very, very high tech. This is your 15 <laughs> seconds warning. Yeah. That's how long you've got to wrap up. Um, because if I don't keep it quite tight to time, um, then, then we will just go on all night, and I know people do have other things to do. Um, and I am just, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it in, you know, uh, traditional order of one to five, so that you do know when you're coming up, and I'm not going to pounce on you when you're not expecting me. Um, so I'm going to ask the first group if they mind feeding back, which was, um, <laughs> I've scribbled this so fast, I don't think I can read my own writing. I think it's Kaz, Janice, Andy, and Simon. <coughs> As you all look at each other frantically going. I nominate Carolyn. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> it might be good if the rest of us do mute ourselves while they feed back so they can talk across each other, but we won't be clinking our, our teacups too much. Um well we we were we were saying how much we'd enjoyed it, how much we'd learned. Um and I'm only going to do a bit of it, and I'm going to pass this on. <laughs> um, but um, for and uh, we had a mix of people who were doing personal stories um, and um, traditional storytelling, um, and actually we felt that and they kind of merge across each other. Um, and often when we're telling a traditional story, uh, the the personal and the whole kind of humanity <laughs> um, is all there. And Janice was saying how important the structure um, of traditional um, stories, uh, how that helped, um, helps to contain uh, someone telling a story. Um, would somebody else like to speak? Janice, do you want to take over now? Um, yes, we were talking about how much we, we love the show and that you should keep doing more of what you're doing. That, And I was saying that how much I loved hearing storytellers talk about storytelling. I mean, not that I don't love when they're telling, but it's it's really fun to hear people talk about their process and what they do to bring a story to listeners. So I love that part. Do more of that. <laughs> we were also talking about on, on, so online that we really enjoyed it as an online thing and that there were other things that we hadn't enjoyed so much perhaps online, but 
the telling of stories still still really had a place, um, especially for me. I think I was saying compared to other things that I've done online, it really had a place, but was getting the feedback that some of the storytellers were finding that it was very draining for them. We were actually going to pose that as a question to you if you felt that because you weren't getting the interaction from the audience, whereas us as an audience were like, ah, oh, I'm in the little land. I, I can float away and, and forget about all this stuff that's going on, which was um, a really nice place to be in these times. It was the energy, right? That the energy you get from listeners, you don't get so much online that I've had a lot of tellers who are doing big shows who are, who come off and instead of being energized and ready to you know, do it again, they're tired and need a nap. So it's a different, it's different that way. The energy is really different. So you don't have to do three minutes. You've got a bit of time left if you want it, but it's not compulsory. <laughs> <laughs> Did you want to say anything else? Uh, what what struck what struck me most was um, Janice was saying that it was a little island of sanity in a, in a <laughs> world that appears to have gone mad, and that it was um, a, a, a lifeline. Don't mind me paraphrasing phrasing you, Janice. I know that's what it is. <laughs> yeah, the smoke. And it, it was it was lovely to hear that if you're in the state on lockdown, you haven't been out the house. This was a little <laughs> to watch somebody telling a sulky story on a rock beside the ocean. Oh, it was wonderful, it's a glorious thing, and I just think, hey, it's worth doing it for that one moment. Well, what, what lovely feedback! Thank you. And I think it's different for everybody. That whole thing about um, about telling stories online, and I, I won't go on, on too long. I I found it okay actually. I was surprised to me, but I haven't done that much of it. I did one big show on Friday and that's the first time I've done it, which was like a two hour sort of a two hour piece. And, um, and I told Simon Hayward sort of say beforehand about telling online, it's a bit like jumping into the sea and it's swimming in cold water. You kind of, you dive in and you go, <gasps> and then, and then kind of, you kind of keep swimming and you get used to the water and then it's all right. And it, it was very, it was very like that. And obviously I've done a lot of this and, but, but hosting and talking and I've usually had somebody else with me. So I've, there's a bit of backwards and forwards on conversation. I haven't just been speaking out, but it's an individual thing. I still can feel the audience there. You hold space when you tell a story. And for me, I can do, I can still feel that even with the, the screen in the way. And I, and I can do that listening as well. I can filter the screen out, but I know not, not everybody can. Anyway, I'm not going to talk three minutes in between everybody's group else we won't get anywhere. So I'm going to go to breakout room two, which was Carl, Heather, Melanie and Shane. Okay, uh, well, we had a lot of chat about um, what we do, what we don't do, how we feel about storytelling uh, ourselves. I think a consensus of opinion was that, by and large, the tradition, as it, as it is, is fairly strong. Now, you've done really well with your taking the tradition on uh, webinars. Uh, nobody seem to think that we need to change the tales themselves or stop telling the tales because as I pointed out uh, none of us are that young anymore <laughs> the, tales, the tales are a damn sight older than we are <laughs> we're still in transpiron and so are I'll tell you now my five-year-old grandchildren so there is a strength within the tradition that if we uh, continue to use it uh, correctly, um, then it, it, it will survive and it will grow. Now, I do, you know, we didn't discuss some of the other stuff that perhaps uh, I could say. Do you want to say something, Shane? I, I can see you on my screen as a big... Oh, can, yeah, I can see you large on my screen, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> um, Whoever's talking usually winds up looking big. Whoever's, whoever's making the most noise. Oh, right. Yes, yeah, as you know, Melly. <laughs> I, you said, Carl, about um, as long as we do it right, the tradition. I, I actually think the stories can survive quite a lot of beating by it being done wrong, too. I read a wonderful <laughs> introduction to the Arabian Nights once and the argument about were they oral or were they written and the introducers, and he was Arabic, 
he said, they've been battered and sent this way and that, and they come around again. It's just, it is what it is. Yeah, that, that's, you've made me realize, Melanie, I didn't mention earlier, but one of the first stories, a Nasruddin story, but I didn't know what it was, I didn't know who he was or anything, was when I was about 16 on a building site. And this chap told this story about someone who was stealing wheelbarrows. Yes, yes. <laughs> and, and, and it wasn't until a lot, lot later that, you know, it's a story of the donkey with the straw and everything, but it was wheelbarrows just with just old sackcloth in them. And, and he kept looking under the sackcloth, you know, and then and he said, why are you stealing? At the end, he said, what are you stealing? He said, wheelbarrows, you know, and I was a 16 year old, you know, builder's labor kind of, and it just was hysterical, you know. Yeah. And that was a long time ago, you know, so. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, um, I, I, I liked, I think, I, I like to keep as traditional as possible, uh, ironically. Um, I mean, I do like telling slightly quirky stories as well, but I do like to keep quite traditional and I, I find that they do work. They, they do cross over. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to stop you, but yeah. It's just, I mean, it's just really interesting how different, I think, different routes of different discussions took and they just all sounded really interesting. And um, I just, it was quite frustrating, actually, because I wanted to be in all of them all at the same time. <laughs> so, oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for those comments. And we're going to leg it on to breakout room three, um, which is Kath, Doc Rowe and Joseph Sable. Doc, you want to give, give this a whack? Okay. Where'd you go? Doc. She's, she's top right on my corner, but that might not be the same for you. <laughs> I said, Doc, you want to give this a try? Because we had more questions that we could answer in 20 minutes. Yeah, we, we, we spent quite a bit of time talking about that magical word traditional. You know, and I, I was probably a bit argumentative, as you know I am, Amy, um, and talking about the vernacular culture rather than uh, talking about traditional, because it, it, uh, as someone said, these tales now appear in different formats. We've now got them on, on Zoom. You know, we have Zoom storytelling. Um, I, th I think one of the things I said regarding that was the fact that... Um, Yeah, it was Joseph, I think, asked me you know, how I got involved, because obviously I'm not a storyteller. But at the same time, I've actually been attracted by those stories, those tales. I mean, in, when I was about 15, I got involved in this, this area. And I was listening to people telling stories, not necessarily traditional, not necessarily jokes, but they were all at one same thing. And I think it's that magical... Um, bit of conjuring up, I think I used when I was talking to you, that the, a good storyteller will actually conjure up. It'll actually bring you into the story. And frequently you, you as a listener are working as hard as that storyteller. And I think that's the magic of good storytelling. Um, Kath was saying that, you know, the world always needs stories. And, and she's absolutely right. We, we do need stories, we thrive on them. And although it's uh, when, when people use the word traditional, I think they start thinking of um, log fires and people sitting in front rooms. Well, they don't just exist there, you know, they everywhere. And now we've got them on Zoom. Um, it's, and, and I think we were saying that uh, a lot of the stories are really, they're celebrating not just the, the previous storytellers, but we're celebrating history, we're celebrating knowledge, we're celebrating lots of things. And, and the, this sharing is important. And um, we've also now got children telling stories to children, which is really exciting. Well, we're also celebrating being in the moment and communicating with something as our kind of vehicle that's been around for centuries. Uh, but it's that, it's that paradox or that simultaneous existence of the past and the present uh, and moving that into the future that makes it powerful. Um, the fact that we're here and now talking and sharing these stories and letting these ancient germs of 
narrative material, which have all that capacity to carry wisdom with them. So 15 seconds on that. There was this, this the question about whether to keep doing Zoom. Um, yeah, Amy, I think we all agreed that you're really good at this. You're the, um, uh, either the Graham Norton or the, uh, 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 the Stephen Colbert of the Zoom storytelling scene. So, so definitely, it 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 lets us um, be in a room, in a virtual room, with people from all over the world, and that's been the re a real gift from this pandemic. Oh, fantastic! Well, thank you, thank you very much, and um. Yeah, well, that, I will be posing that as another question at the end. I do have a bit of a poll, and I'll be I'll be asking you specifically about taking the tradition on. I think in a in a little bit, but um, but the taking the tradition on. I mean, what I wanted to do definitely, Doc Rose, that thing. It, it's named like that because I want to take the tradition on. I want to carry it forward, but it is very much about kind of you know thinking about how we do it and what is the tradition and and challenging it a little bit because it's not just about fires and, and log fires, but. <laughs> Yeah, we were certain about that question. We didn't know whether taking the tradition on, meaning the theories that you've you've put together. Mm, that's what I was going to ask. Tradition itself. Well, it's yeah, it's both. It's both. I mean, that's that's the whole. That's the point of it. Yeah, it's um, having having the opportunity to do both, which is great. So, breakout room four, which is Anne, Mike, and Helen. Right, well, I got elected as the spokesperson, so there was, I didn't get a vote in this, but um, right, Amy, you'll be pleased to say I don't think we mentioned you once, we were just talking about ourselves. <laughs> so what do we think of the tradition? We, the tradition is what we have today, it's different from what, where it was 40 years ago and it will be different in 40 years time. And it is our job to make sure that we pass it from one place to another, which touches on the online thing, which I'll speak about in a moment. And there's, but it's different to each person and each teller. Everybody sees it slightly different in every way. And Helen thought it was ever so important that we pass it on person to person to person, which is in a, in a live way. And it has to be in our circumstances as storytellers to be all. And we all thought that was really, really important. That you can't really, you can lock it up in in um, in books and things, and then bring it back again. But it is best passed on orally in in the storytelling world. Um, the next question down is as um, Helen thought it was very important to to travel, and her what? way of going of collecting stories and passing them on and doing whatever it was was to travel. She mentioned she'd been in Jordan for a year. And she'd come back with stories and they'd been passed from one language and to another and back to her and all around. And her way of doing it was that. Um, Anne thought was to pass it on in any, ha in any way you can, as long as it works for them. And the idea was to infuse people to become storytellers or to become listeners, particularly in the youth. I think it's more as, uh, it's like a swap, actually, because, you know, we're where you go, if you tell you tell a story and you get the story back again, and it's just a, it's just a, um, uh, it's it's a swap. <laughs> you well, know, yeah. you swap yeah. as listening, or you you know what I mean. Somebody tells you a story that reminds you of someone else. They tell someone else. It just um, and on it goes round and round. Yeah. 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 So then we focused pretty much on it, and we had quite a discussion on the online stuff. Mm -hmm. And the online stuff was new to all of us. I don't think anybody, I'm, I'm certain that Helen and I hadn't really come across Zoom before Christmas. Mm -hmm. um, but we saw it in the end, and we all agreed that it was a tool. And that it, if we, are we going to use, use it as online stuff again? Well, yes, as a tool, it, it is best live. It is best when there was a live story in front, uh, tell it, in front of a live audience doing what they're good at. And, and, and for me, it's always got to be entertaining. But, but this pandemic has meant that people like us, or me in particular, have, have found something else that we can use to our benefit and hopefully benefit others. And so the, we, will we listen to online stuff again? Yes. And do we want you to carry on for another 15 seconds, which I'm sure I've got, Amy. We wanted to end up by saying, thank you very much for doing what you've done. 
It's been a brilliant series and we've all enjoyed it. And I hope you all agree. If you do, you go like this. <laughs> Yay. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. Right. I'm going to race forward because we, um, yeah, it's getting close on time. We've got one more group, but it just, it is really interesting. I think I had different groups focusing on different questions and having kind of slightly different responses to it all as well. But I'm going to write breakout room five, which is Colin, Leslie and Sal to have their say. Sal, you were making notes. Can you take it? I certainly can. And then you interrupt if I miss anything out. Okay. <laughs> um, we started off with what does the storytelling tradition mean and we said well it's quite difficult to define things and I think a lot of people have talked to that sort of um, evolving um, art form that we are all practicing in lots of different ways and so we felt that there were many traditions and of course we're on the cusp of new traditions thanks to this pandemic and the different medium with which, in which we're working. Uh, what importance does traditional storytelling hold in the world today? Well, we talked about um, learning from elders and we also talked about um, not only imparting information from elders to youngers, but also the problem with that in that there is some sort of, um, it's not always that you want the children to <laughs> learn what the elders think they should learn and it's not always appropriate. So we talked about like that, that reciprocity and that sort of exchange um, that young and old can learn between each other. And we also said that storytelling to, uh, in the world today is very much about belonging and identity. Um, how did we feel about storytelling online? Well, people felt that they'd been able to go places that they'd never been before. And it was really enjoyable. They visited storytelling clubs that they'd never been to and felt that they were really sort of linked across the planet really with international, uh, on an international platform. Um, but people felt it's more tiring and also that um, people weren't quite sure how they come across in a Zoom. It's quite hard to assess your performance and vibe out your audience on Zoom, especially if there's more than nine people and you have to sort of swipe across your celebrity squares to kind of... <laughs> of see the, the whites of the eyes if that is even possible on Zoom. Um, people felt that they would carry on online storytelling and they would love it to continue because they've been able to visit clubs and connect with people um, and also felt it was really inclusive for people maybe with disabilities who found it difficult to travel around so it's really opened up that way and yes we all felt that whilst we prefer preferred real life visceral storytelling there really is a place for occasional zoom connections on storytelling and i think that sort of summarizes the page of notes that that i made yep well done sal well done uh, yes that covers it i think and we we agree with everybody else amy douglas should carry on <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Well, well, on that note, um, yeah, I do, I do have a poll that I prepared earlier, <laughs> but, um, which, uh, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, to launch now, and I shall talk over it while it's, it's. This is just me playing with all the tools that I haven't got to play with on Zoom before, really. <laughs> um, but it is. I mean, I, I have had a funded project, so the fact that you have all, you know, taken the time to show up tonight and to give your feedback, um and made I mean, loads and loads of really interesting feedback to take back to the Arts Council about what people are thinking about this new way of working and being online and, and about the tradition is really useful and really important. Um, and it, but it's also kind of, it's quite interesting that whole thing, there's lots of ways of splitting the tradition up. Um, so, I mean, certainly for me, I've got all of this material from Duncan. Well, there's the material, there's actual sort of stories and songs but then there's also ways of telling those stories and songs and ways of actually just telling stories generally and how you learn material and how you work with it. And the skill set and the material set are actually completely different, though they are usually passed on together. Um, and so I'm in the space for me with those things about taking the tradition on. It's like, yes, there's the stories and the, the skills, as Doc was saying, but there's also just all of the 
the stories. And for me, I don't think the way to take the tradition on is to leave them in a museum and just an archive for people to go back and listen to when they feel like it and for it to be set in aspic. I don't think Duncan expected to be the end of the line and everybody to be constantly referring back to him. I think there's ways that like like Helen and Mike were saying about that oral transmission that it needs to be changing and, and it needs to be going on. There's the other thing that traditionally maybe people didn't really get paid for storytelling and there's a big place for like you know kind of all the old boys and the people still in the pub or whatever and for talking and that that companionship and that gossip and that's brilliant. I hope it continues forever. For me as a storyteller I need to think about making a living. I think Heather was talking about that in one of the groups as well. So one of the things with me about taking the tradition on is it's been absolutely brilliant to do it. I've learned so much. I've got to talk to loads of, of, of people and to discuss their, um, how they approach their art and where they come from. And I'd love to carry on with that. Doing it once a week, realistically, without funding, I don't think I can continue just because I've got to make a living and I've got children and a family who kind of, you know, started going, who are you? <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so I, yeah, I think I would need to find a way of funding taking the tradition on. I don't think I can do it weekly for free. I will definitely do it in some format because it's been brilliant, but maybe if I don't, um, and any money, then it's, it might be fortnightly or, or monthly. Um, but it's been an amazing experience and I've learned so much and I'm really, really grateful to all of you guys because you are the people who've been supporting it and coming to it and making it worth doing and have put up with all the glitches while I kind of learn all the technology. And I mean, that's been a really good thing for me is that everybody being thrown into lockdown is that everybody has been very supportive of one another, I think, and very forgiving because everybody's learning all at the same time. And it's, well, we'll just, just keep going and it's fine. So you've all put yourself on mute now i was just thinking oh it's so nice being able to see you and hear you all and now it's like being back on a webinar when you're all being completely silent so yeah exactly yeah heather and carl yeah i think it may well end up being monthly and i think that'll be um that that's definitely doable and i'll definitely be doing that i think at least at least monthly so i am planning to save the chat and i am planning to put say some of this feedback onto youtube so i hope that that is okay with everybody and um this is about it for taking the tradition on but um i'm going to leave it open at the end because i think one of the things i've definitely found with zoom is that um that the worst bit telling stories networking everything is great what is really weird is is just pressing that switch and going from being in a room full of people to absolutely nothing so I'm not going to end the meeting. I'm going to let people stop and talk to each other and just sort of drift off as they feel like it. Um, but to finish it off, if it's all right with Doc, I'm going to play a little bit of Duncan, which we didn't get to do when you were on. Is that okay? Um, and not a story, actually, that we just finish with a, with a tune. <laughs> she says, hopefully. <laughs> okay yeah. the technology was never going to work brilliantly on the last one was it it was always going to take the michael here we go there you go <laughs> mm. i know there's a few scots sitting in there in that in that audience tonight mm. let me take you for the bank's performance <laughs> as much as he wants to play <laughs> that's what that's what duncan has to say about being on zoom <laughs> which doesn't surprise me in the least um 
But anyway, so on Duncan's behalf, he was going to say thank you very much at the end. I'm going to say thank you very much. Um, and yeah, unmute yourselves. Talk to the person that you didn't manage to talk to or shout, shout across everybody or just vanish. But this is the official end of tonight. I'm going to read the chat um, and maybe answer some things on there and just hang out and talk to anybody who wants to talk to me. But this is the official end, so go whenever you want to.